When you enter the doors of George Dawson Middle School here in South Lake, Texas, you will walk past the bust of the man this school is named after, George Dawson. For many students, George Dawson is not a well-known name, but his life is something to be remembered. Every morning I wake up, I look at a poster um, of a quote that my grandfather said, and it says, it's never too late to realize your dreams. I learned to um, read at 98 years old. George Dawson was born in Marshall, Texas in 1898. He was the grandson of slaves and was raised in a poor farming family. Dawson experienced the harshness of the segregated South at an early age. At 10, one of his best friends, Pete Spillman, was lynched after he was falsely accused of raping a white woman in town. Dawson witnessed his lynching and expressed his anger in the book, Life is So Good, a book he co-wrote with Richard Globman. I will never work for or talk to a white person again, I said with anger. That was wrong what they did, I said. These white folks are mean and nasty people. Papa swallowed hard and pulled up on the reins to the wagon, so the wagon stopped. He turned towards me. No, you will work for white folks. You will talk to them. But Papa, what about Pete? He didn't do nothing wrong, and they killed him. Papa looked at me and said, Some white folks are just mean and nasty. Some were just scared. It doesn't matter. You have no right to judge another human being. Don't you ever forget it, my father had spoken. This lesson taught by his father led Dawson to a life of acceptance and grace. Globman said the reaction from Dawson after he wrote the first chapter was something he won't forget. I'm reading it to him. And then I'm realizing, I don't really want to be reading this chapter to him. I mean, it's just, it's right. pretty brutal, as you know, the first chapter. And I looked over and he had tears just rolling down his face. You know, I just felt terrible. You know, this is a hundred year old man, 100 plus. It's, I really had grown to like, I really loved him at that point, And I felt terrible. And I said, uh, well, we, we don't have to, we could stop here. And he goes, no, keep going. This needs to be said. So I kept reading and he kept crying. Dawson was never able to go to school and was illiterate for most of his life. When he turned 98, he found out about an adult education class taught by Carl Henry in Dallas, Texas. The story of learning how to read at 98 gained national attention and eventually got Dawson a segment on The Oprah Winfrey Show. Globman, who was an elementary school teacher in Seattle, Washington, heard about Dawson's story in a local newspaper and was inspired to write a book about his life. And it was about George Dawson uh, celebrating his birthday party at school, his 100th birthday party. And I realized as I read the article, he was probably reading his birthday cards by himself for the first time in his life at age 100. Even though Dawson couldn't read for most of his life, that did not stop him from traveling the world and finding work. He would calmly jump on and off freight trains with hobos. He traveled from Texas to Canada and even Mexico. It wasn't easy for a colored person to be traveling back then. Matter of fact, it could be dangerous. The Klan was growing and running strong then. Walking down the road all day was just asking for trouble. Despite these dangers, Dawson got to experience many places and people. But he always knew Texas was home and eventually came back. He married and had seven children. He was a lovable person. He, he was like a great inspirational person. He, he was great, like he was humble, um, always willing to lend a helping can whenever he like, wherever his neighbors needed something, he was there. Dawson worked at Oak Farms Dairy in Dallas for close to 30 years. Even though he could not read, he could fix anything just by paying attention. After he was forced to retire, he started to do yard work. One experience working at a white woman's house allowed him to stand up for what he believed. She offered him lunch while he was working, but put the food on the back porch, the same place where the woman's dogs ate their food. Dawson, who says he wasn't involved much with civil rights, said at this moment he knew he would stand his ground and refuse to eat with dogs. This is what he said in his book after the woman asked why he wouldn't eat her perfectly good stew. It's just that I don't eat with dogs. As I said that, I looked at her straight in the eye. I could tell she understood what I meant. She got angry and red in the face, but I didn't turn away or look down. Fine then, it's your choice to waste perfectly good food. I just hate to see that happen. Despite what I was feeling inside, I kept a level voice. I hate to see food wasted too, ma'am. Her face softened a bit when I agreed with that. I went on, but I eat with people. I am a human being. 
Dawson knew he had to make a stand to be an example for his children. Dawson was a man who was humble and respectful and always looked at the bright side of life despite his challenges. Once I got to know him, he, he, well, he always was. He was a really warm uh, man with, with, a, with a real sense of humor and uh, just just liked people, liked to be around people, liked people. One time when Globin was at Dawson's house, he noticed a mouse in the kitchen and asked Dawson to kill it. See that potato in the corner? He goes and nibbles on that. I just leave it on the floor for him and he doesn't bother with nothing else. Years ago, I would have killed him in a trap. Now I just figure he needs to eat a little, but he ain't trying to cause me any harm. A potato lasts him a long time. When he finished that, I'll just set out another if I have one. All of Dawson's children graduated from high school and college. One of his major accomplishments after learning the alphabet was to sign his own name. After many years of only signing his name with an X. He also loved baseball and was known for his ability to break horses. His favorite book was the Bible. Every year, the administrators at Dawson Middle School come here to Lincoln Memorial Park in Dallas to put flowers on Dawson's grave. They hope the students who enter Dawson Middle School won't forget the life and example of George Dawson. The quiz that we always give kids is who's George Dawson and they can always tell us hopefully bare minimum that he learned to read at 98 years of age. But I think if they can understand that at an even deeper level, it's about never stopping learning. I mean, that's what we do in education, right? We, we try to create lifelong learners. That's one of our catchphrases as educators, but that's living it. That's somebody who said even at 98 years of age, never having had the opportunity to learn how to read, let's go, let's learn. George Dawson died at 103 years old on July 5th, 2001. He was aware that George Dawson Middle School was going to be named for him before his death. From his ability to never give up on education, to his heart, and his outlook on life, Dawson always remembered this quote from his dad, and it is something we should never forget. Life is good. I do believe it's getting better.